Good evening. We'll go ahead and call tonight's Board of Finance meeting to order. Dr. Mallon? Thank you. Board, uh, it's uh, an annual obligation for us as, as a board, for you as a board, to identify officers for the Board of Finance. Um, and so that's a policy 3160, so we do it annually. This is the time that we get that done. It has to be done by the end of January, so luckily we're going to meet that deadline. And um, at that time, not only do you nominate and elect officers, but also um, our chief financial officer would do a review of investments. So uh, at this time, Ms. Um, uh, Gilkey, we would need to talk about possible nominations for President and Secretary of the Board of Finance. Okay. Um, at this time, as the Acting President, I will open up the nominations for the Board of Finance President and Secretary. Is there a motion? I make a motion for, as we have been doing, that the President and the Secretary hold those positions. Okay, so your motion is for Mr. Pavey to act as President of the Board of Finance and Mr. White to act as the Secretary of the Board of Finance. And there's a second. Right. Any other nominations? All in favor, please raise your right hand. All right, that's unanimous. Thank you. Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess, uh, Dr. Dykel, I think, can you uh, take us through the review of the investment policy, please? Sure. According to uh, Indiana Code 5-13-7-7, which I know everybody will remember, <coughs> requires that the investment offer shall annually make a written report that summarizes the school corporation's investments during the previous year. You have a copy there. Um, basically what we do is we have our money at uh, your community bank. We did a two-year bid or an RFP for that. and. Uh, the interest rate is 0.75. That's what they have guaranteed us for the last two years, and um, it's a lot better than anybody else has given us. You can see what our month-end balances are, what the interest rate is, and uh, in 2013, we ended up getting $170,867. But if you go back to 2008, when the interest rates were 3 and 4%, we were actually making 319000 on our money. The low that we had was the next year, 2009, we only pulled in 83000 And we really used the interest to help fund our general fund. So anytime we take a big hit in interest, that, that hurts our general fund revenue. So any questions? We, we basically put it in a money market account, um, and that's where it goes. So there aren't many options that schools have to invest money. Does the board have any questions? I think we open it up if there's any comments from the public. Uh, we do that now. All right, seeing there's none, I have a motion to adjourn the public finance meeting. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Second. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. All in favor? All right, 7 0. That will conclude the Board of Finance meeting. So we'll move on into the regular meeting tonight. Um, Renee, please show all board members present. And we'll go ahead and start if you'll join me with, for the um, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, do we have any amendments to the agenda tonight? Uh, board, yes we do. We'd like to add an action item. Uh, it would be action item 4, and that would be a revision to the 2013-14 school calendar. All right. Let's have a motion. Make a motion to agenda amenda. Thank you, Mr. White. Agenda Amenda? <laughs> Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hall. All right. Any questions about I, I'm not even going to try that. Any questions? Uh, <laughs> all right. All in favor? Well, yeah, you have. Which one are we voting on? 7-0. All right. Uh, Dr. Mellon, we have any public comments tonight? No, sir. We don't.
Okay. All right. Uh, we have a presentation tonight on uh, student attendance, corporation grades, and early college. Board, uh, we were to have this morning a mid-year review of our strategic plan, and uh, due to our delay, our committee was not able to meet. That meeting has been rescheduled, I believe, for February 18th. Um, but there are some other things that I'd like to at least bring to your attention. Uh, one is uh, first semester attendance. If you don't mind opening that. Um, you know, one of the things that is important that we measure is student attendance. And what we have here is a comparison of first semester attendance for students, 13-14 um, compared to 12-13. And so you can see it by each individual school. Uh, you can see that overall attendance uh, by school is up in 13-14 over 12-13. The actual corporation average, which, which is down toward the bottom of the document, um, is 95.94% uh, relative to 95.53 and 12.13. So balanced calendar, part of the reason for going to the balanced calendar was uh, try to improve student attendance. So at least at, at this point, looking at first semester data, it looks like we're moving in the right direction. Even those schools, uh, no, no drastic uh, negatives from any school perspective that I could see. Uh, everyone is pretty close. If you will look at Clark County Middle High, uh, I'm very impressed with that number. You can see that's a radical change. And um, uh, Jeff Griffith is our uh, director in, of that facility, and I believe that uh, you know that's in part due to him and his he and his staff. So I'm very impressed there as well. Uh, Corden Porter, you can see, uh, is up almost a, a percentage point as well. I'm very proud of uh, Mrs. Morris, our new principal there. So I just wanted to share with you that uh, attendance is up, and that's a good thing. Right. You know, do you have any questions? Or uh, also, we would like to talk to you a little bit um, about early college and if Mr. Hare doesn't mind uh, we'd like to bring you up to speed on what early college is and what we're trying to get accomplished. Yeah, thanks Dr. Mellon Board. This is uh, certainly a topic that we'll bring back to you uh, a couple more times because it's pretty exciting. Um, early college in a nutshell uh, is the ability for our high school students to earn college credits um, and um, you know that that is part of our college and career readiness initiative. Um, and um, we, are, we are very excited that, um, you know, we, we have been able to do this through our partnerships with some of our um, post-secondary schools, Ivy Tech, IU, um, there are a couple of other ones. And we'll have a few kids that will actually finish um, high school this year with an associate's degree. Um, we have a, a lot of our students, as you well know, are earning credits, whether it be through our AP classes or our dual credit classes. Um, and we've done a, a pretty good job of, of focusing that through this initiative. Um, but one of the things that, that we're getting ready to start is uh, we are going through um, this, a cell, and it's the Center of, Ed of Excellence of Leadership and Learning. And what that is, it's, it's, a, it's an accreditation process or an endorsement process. And their whole, their whole focus is, is looking at kids who maybe are either first-time college students, first-generation college students, or students who are not real sure what they're going to do and exposing them to some of the classes that kids may take at an Ivy Tech or post-secondary in high school. Um, and we're really excited about this endorsement. It's something that we're going to do at, at Jeffersonville High School and at Charlestown High School. Um, there is a conference that is paid for out of the CELL initiative um, through the University of Indianapolis um, that we're taking a team from Jeffersonville High School and Charlestown High School. Part of that team is made up of our middle school folks so that we can start talking to those kiddos. As you, you well know, we're doing that in our sixth grade um, career classes, but also in seventh and eighth grade, and then in partnering with Ivy Tech. So there, there will be some folks from Ivy Tech that will join in us too. Um, and really, it, it is this endorsement, and, and it is really putting us on track for kids to walk out either with an associate's degree or, for sure, credits that would transfer within the state of Indiana to other colleges. So it's something that we're very excited about. It's, it's part of the College Career Readiness Initiative. Um, it is really challenging our students um, to take rigorous courses so that they're prepared after high school. We really feel that it fits right in with uh, what we're trying to do and, and, and accomplish through the College and Career Readiness. 
um, and very excited. So we'll be doing that in a couple of weeks. Wanted to kind of give you a little taste of, of what we're going to do. And then after the couple of days of training, there are eight um, systems, if you will, that they're going to train us on for on each day. Um, and we'll bring that back to the board. But wanted to kind of let you know uh, how this ties into to that initiative. Thank you. Hey, Travis, one question. If a child from New Washington took every available course, what would they come out with? At New Washington? I'm not, I don't want that answer tonight. I'm just, when you present it, if you would. Okay. Please, I'm not looking for that. I mean, I think one of the challenges yeah. that we have is that you have to have a set number of courses. The, the school has to have a comprehensive enough curriculum that it would have, uh, allow those students in New Washington High School, we do have dual credit opportunities. We have some AP offerings, but we it's not extensive just because of the limitations of the size of the building. So what will be interesting there is as we look at it, you know, the both Jeff High and Charlestown High have the size that's sufficient to meet the needs of this endorsement. The key then would be to be able to communicate to those families in New Washington at least the option uh, that might present itself because we are, it's not to say that we're not going to offer dual credit opportunities at New Washington or AP courses. I mean, we're going to continue to maximize that to the best of our ability, but we are somewhat limited at this time. Just because of the, the, the number of courses. Right. Range. And, you know, Mr. Shiner, I think that's, we understand that, and I, I think they understand it in New Washington. And, and certainly as we go up there and, and do these two days of training, maybe maybe there's some other options that we can look at. I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to speculate now, but let us kind of get that under our belt and, and kind of take a look at it. I don't know if there's a hybrid that we could, could do or if they all would have to go to Charlestown, but let us kind of take a that's look at it. That's kind of what I'm That would be something that we could certainly report mm -hmm. back to you as we, we continue and That's kind of what I'm road. looking at, if they could maybe take a couple in Charlestown. Yeah. But no, no, I didn't want an answer tonight, just, just a thought. Well, sure. Certainly, yeah, and, and we're, we, we're aware of it. And Mr. Ledbetter, so you know, knows what we're doing, and we just, because of the limitations, I'm just not taking a team, but we'll certainly bring that back and, and share with him and continue to go down that road. Thank you. The, next the last thing, Board, is, as part of this that I wanted to mention to you is our corporation grade from the state. And we are a C corporation again. Uh, that's not bad news, but it's not the news we wanted to hear. However, I think what is important to note is that our corporation grade point average is 2.86 last year was 2.56 so we're growing you know we're getting better uh, obviously our goal is to get our corporation at least to that B level and we're very close and it would be our hope that by this time next year we'll be at least at that B level but you know a, a focus that we have as a district is just constantly looking to get better mm -hmm. and at least we're making some strides mm -hmm. along the right lines I don't know if you have any questions about that process or I'd be happy to answer anything there too Thank you. All right. Doc, thank you, Dr. Mellon. All right. Uh, we don't have any policy review tonight, I don't guess. So we'll go on into the budget report. Uh, item one, fund monitoring. Dr. Dykel. We have good news. Um, in the general fund, as you look at that, basically we ended the year with $2.6 in the bank in the black, which is great, because normally we should be in the red. <coughs> now, as I've been telling you all along, we had four payments from Impact Aid for you know, the ammunition plant of $2.7 million. So it's artificial, okay? So if you take out three of those payments that we should have had in prior years, we actually were about 500000 in the red which is a lot better than what we were a year ago. So we've seen some good success. Uh, we're going to see more success in 14. Um, remember, we reduced you know, staff. We'll see the full effect of that in 2014. We only saw 10 payments, uh, 10 uh, pays in uh, 2013 for all of those people that had left. So we're, we're on the way up. So it'll be sustainable. Hopefully, when I stand before you this time next year, we'll say we're three or four million in the red, or in the black. I mean, <laughs> so, anyway, general fund looks good, but again, it's because of the impact aid money we got. 
debt service fund uh, we'll just talk about that um, this one and pension debt is not affected by the tax caps these are the protected funds so we don't have to worry about tax caps here um, there shouldn't be any problem with this we ended with 4.4 .4 million in debt service and it's in really an 18 month fund because we not only do all of this year's bills uh, or all of 2013 but we also get the money the property tax for the first six months of 14 we always do 18 months on that same thing with the pension debt we ended up with uh, 250 almost 259,000 in the bank there now capital projects the next three funds I was worried about I thought we were really going to be in the red and again it depends on the tax caps and that's what I was telling you during the course of the year not knowing exactly where they were going to be we were told we were estimating 2.6 million dollars that we would lose in tax caps we only lost 1.9 million so that's seven hundred thousand dollars roughly sixty of sixty percent of it would go to CPF thirty percent would go to transportation operating and the remaining ten percent would go to bus replacement so you'll see we're doing real good we actually ended with a cash balance of three hundred and thirty eight thousand in CPF after we took out the encumbrances we wrote purchase orders to cover things that we needed to do that were still in process in transportation operating uh, I was really worried I thought we'd be about 200,000 in the red we ended up uh, 32,000 in the black 32.5 so I was real happy with that and uh, bus replacement we ended up with 99,661 in the black and the nice thing was I didn't have to take any money out of the rainy day fund except for project lead the way because I had asked you before to give me permission to do the whole appropriation not knowing how much we were going to need by the end of the year so we're still sitting with three million five twelve in uh, the rainy day fund and we still need to pay back another two hundred and fifty thousand I think from project lead the way which will be done by June of this year so. <laughs> <laughs> not me <laughs> it works all you folks <laughs> I just report them. Any questions? Uh, Tom, maybe for future, I've been thinking about this. If if we could get a uh, a, a pen, uh, laser pen, because mm -hmm. I know when we put up those numbers, I'm trying to catch up with what you're reading, and maybe with laser pen, you could you could highlight and for idiots like me and the crowd on really what we want to focus in what you're speaking about. I don't know if we can afford it yet, Tony. But, but Tony, you always tell us don't spend any more money. Uh, you can get those free at conferences. Oh. <laughs> you know the right people. Follow him. How many do you have, Tony? Yeah. <laughs> A couple. Uh, ISBA Summer Academy is coming up, so you can get one, I'm sure. Right. Fun. Find well, a vendor there. As long as we don't do like somebody did in uh, Washington or out no, there, he oh, was yeah. presenting something, and his laser pen went out. And he pulled out his gun from his back pocket oh. and used the laser <laughs> on the gun. Point up on the screen. <laughs> People no. got nervous. No, no. no. Yeah. So I'll leave my gun at home. No, no. no. But I don't have a laser. No. No. <laughs> you have a policy against that. Yeah, we do. Yeah. The the next no, thing no, I want to no, talk no, to you no, about no. is. Governor Pence is going around talking about elimination of the business personal property mm -hmm, tax mm -hmm. and he's not giving any indication as far as what he wants to do to replace it and we're talking over a billion dollars statewide in property taxes now, that's great you know for the taxpayers I mean I'm all for it but it will really severely impact everybody that relies on property taxes from the, the county the cities the towns all taxing units the schools now the county can actually recoup part of their loss through the county option income tax they can raise it if we're not at the max now or they could probably do a ordinance and, and just increase it but what I have here up on the screen is showing you all of Clark County mm -hmm. and when you look at the the middle columns total elimination and the 30 floor 30 percent floor elimination I was trying to figure out how this actually works because normally schools don't deal with this it's just part of our overall property tax but from what I understand from what I've read is there's a uh, 30 percent floor businesses can go into one of five buckets or categories of how they want their property taxes to be calculated 
and that's kind of what makes up the floor so if you look at greater clark county schools we could lose four point six million if they totally eliminate property the business property tax or if they just eliminate the thirty percent floor we would lose three point two million dollars that's a lot of money now i just want to bring this up to the board a lot of cities towns counties from what i read throughout the state of indiana school districts are doing resolutions opposing this will it fly in the state legislature i don't know it's something governor pence is trying to do to stimulate growth in the state of indiana if you'd be interested in filing a resolution we could prepare a resolution maybe not for the next board meeting because it was due today but for maybe the second board meeting in february if the board so desires otherwise we can just leave it alone but it's just i just wanted to show you how it would affect all the different taxing units in clark county and you can see there's some big hits at jeffersonville city six million seven or four point five million charlestown three hundred thirteen thousand clarksville a million nine and a million two depending on which way they go so you can see there's some big chunks and then you get down into the tiff districts and boy we've affected tiff districts too they'd be losing some money so it's just information only if the board wants me to prepare a resolution we can have it ready for the second board meeting in february opposing the governor's plan otherwise we can just let it go is there any reason is there any reason why we couldn't adopt a resolution next tuesday evening well our board packet was due today right for tomorrow tomorrow okay well i'll have it ready for the next board meeting the reason i'm asking is because of course we could send that out to all our legislators but on february 14th we have a joint school board committee with our local legislators and it'd be nice to be able to personally hand it to them along with and i'm sure fred will have something prepared too that shows the impact you know on our corporation if they pass this we can actually attach this for all of clark county you think about the impact of tax caps you know around two million dollars i don't know what it ended up being for 13 1.9 1.8 okay 1.9 million and then throw additional several million dollars on top of that i mean we're already struggling um and so it's really important uh that we do everything in our power to talk to legislators and and to, to provide whatever influence we can um, because it will be another huge hit to us and we can't afford any more and see where our assessed valuation is going down and taking all of this money out of the assessed valuation and the property taxes that we would lose i think the tax rate would just go sky high which would then subject us to more tax caps it would just devastate a lot of places i think so. i'll second ms craft's motion to prepare a resolution at the next board meeting for adoption yeah. discussions it was just two years ago we lost three million now see when they got rid of the property taxes in the general fund what they did was they increased sales tax a year before <coughs> to start building up the um, the pot and here he's just coming out wipe wipe it out totally or 30 percent floor and there's no indication how he's going to replace it that's what bothers i think a lot of people and that doesn't help small business i no. can tell you it's a small business owner you know well, here's the thing. I mean, I mean, if you depreciate your property, your equipment, you may have had something for 10 years and it's already been fully depreciated, but yet you're still paying business right. property tax mm -hmm. on it. So, what good does it do? All right. All in favor? All right. Thank you, Dr. Dyke. Thank you. Appreciate you doing that for us can't imagine you're going to have a lot of company out there looking at all the other school districts around. All right, I think our next uh, item is the student achievement, ACT report. Board, just want to share with you, you know, ACT is a big part of our college and career readiness uh, program as well. It's been around for several years. A huge commitment has been made by our district to the ACT program. Uh, currently, all 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th graders 
are taking an ACT test. Um, and uh, this is a standardized measure that gives you a sense of what a student's hard skills are in English, math, reading, and science. But also there's a career component that's very important to it. Our foundation has been kind enough to raise funds over the years to help support it. Um, it's about a $70,000 cost per year. Um, in this, so this is something that every one of our students, 8th through 11th grade, are taking these tests. So I wanted to share uh, what I think is some good progress uh, if you look at it, comparing uh, 12 and 13. So if you look across, I'm just going to, you can look at the individual school information, but I'm going to focus on district data. In English, 46% are at or above benchmark. That benchmark is saying that these are kids that uh, this benchmark shows that they should be successful in college uh, based upon this assessment. So at a district level in English, 46%, 35% a year ago. Math, 26%, 16% a year ago. You can see reading is a 5% increase, science a 4% increase, and overall composite of 3. Again, it's growth, um, and I think that's a positive thing. That's grade 11 ACT. If you look down the average ACT score for grade 11, you can look at district versus national. Keep in mind that not every student in the country is taking the ACT test. So our scores, on average, were four points below the national average in English. But again, not every student in the country is taking that test, not every junior. So, um, and you look across, and you can see, though, again, growth in every category, English, math, reading, and science, and composite, we're showing improvements. And again, that's a key. We're getting better every year across the board. So that's ACT taken by all of our juniors. All right. Plan test. The plan test is taken by now all of our 10th graders. They, um, however, these 10th graders took the same plan test a year ago as 9th graders. It used to be in our district that... Uh, the plan test was taken at the ninth grade level, and Explore was at the seventh and eighth grade. But what we found uh, when I came in was the tests aren't normed for those grade levels. So we weren't getting an accurate apples to apples comparison. So that's why we moved Explore back to eighth and ninth and plan to tenth because that's the national norm. Um, so you can just, again, look down through the data, and again, what you'll find is that overall you'll see um, improvement over time, if you look at English, for example, um, you can see 69% are at or above benchmark as a district uh, relative to the national average of 64%. So we're above that national average in terms of percentage of students at or above benchmark. So that is very good news. Uh, now, in math, we're not above the national, but you can see there's been growth in the last couple of years from 16, 17 to 24 percent. In reading, you can see a little bit more flatlined, which is pretty typical across the country, closer to that national um, average and or national percentage. And then in science, uh, you can see where we are there as well, a big improvement in science from 12 to 13. The plan average score, again, you look down to the bottom, district versus national, and look over time, you see, again, English, there's been a big improvement over years, and again, we're about even with the national average. In math, just below the national average by a point, um, and again, growth pretty much over time. Reading, uh, a big improvement there, and close to the national average. Science, close to the national average composite close to the national average. And again, all of our 10th graders are taking this, you know, relative to uh, that's not necessarily being the case across the country. If you come down to explore, I think you'll find uh, the same kind of results that are occurring. I, I, I think the key factor is we have our counselors using this data to have conversations with our students, not only about the hard skill components, where students are in their English, math, reading, and science skills, but also using the career 
data that's provided in this assessment to talk about next steps for them, whether that might be, you know, what post-secondary opportunity might be in their best interest. So our counselors have used this information and data to meet with our students and have those kinds of discussions. Our principals, we're talking about how we can uh, better utilize this data across the entire school, uh, better informing all of our teachers. And uh, maybe at one of our future meetings, uh, the data warehouse that you approved a long time ago is at a point where uh, it's going to be implemented and we'll bring that to you so you can see it, but ACT data will be part of that data warehouse. So you could call up a profile uh, in your building of ACT data. You can do it by individual teacher and the students in an individual classroom. So we'll share that with you, but the key factor for us is how do we use this data to break it down to provide a greater level of improvement for student achievement. And ACT helps us compare ourselves to around the country. It's a comparison. It gives us a sense of where we are. Overall, I think that we're getting better uh, relative to, to the nation. It's a lot of information, a lot of data, but uh, if you have any questions. Can I just say something? Is it a question? Mm -hmm. I'm just not, a, I'm not sure we all are as aware as we should be that students who are music students do better scholastically. So if we ever have to make a decision on that, we need to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Because if you will notice children from other countries <coughs> that come in that excel, all play an instrument, are all involved in music. Mm -hmm. So it's a very important part of our curriculum. Mm -hmm. And to bring those scores up to music, we need to encourage them to be well-rounded and to take, take seriously those statistics because that's I agree. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mellon. Appreciate that update. All right. Next, we have item J, consent agenda. We have six items. On, I'm sorry. We have five items on there tonight. So, um, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Any questions? I've got a question. Okay. What is a HASTI conference? H A S T I. Science. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Okay. B 7 0. All right. Next is uh, gifts to buildings. And Mr. Satterley, would you do the honor? Absolutely. As, as always, Ms. Kraft prints it for me. And I almost went to two pages this time. We've always get we're always getting something from the community. Looks like we got from DEP. I don't even know who they are, but they're sending the ROTC to Texas along with Eagle Flight and Hazer Klein. That's going to be an outstanding trip for somebody. I'd like to pack myself along and go with them. But anyway, there's and looks like Clark County REMC even came back with 750 so I won't feel so bad when I write on my bill my <laughs> bill this month so <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to accept all right second, second. Um, thank you Jerry mr. white okay all in favor all right be seven seven oh uh, mr. white mr. white all right, next is the uh, action items. We have uh, actually four four items tonight. So the first one is high school credit card fuel only. So tonight's your night, Dr. Deichel. All right. Um, what I'm asking permission today is let me give you a little background information. The high schools have a corporation credit card now that is the corporation's. It's not their own individual one. What we have to do is we have to constantly harass them to get all the receipts in on time before we actually pay the bill. If we do, if we pay the bill late, we get written up by the State Board of Accounts because they'll charge us a, a service fee and we can't do that. It's becoming more and more of a hassle, basically, for, for us to keep tracking them down. So what I'd like to do is, with board permission, to have them get their own credit card. They pay it out of their own extracurricular 
instead of it coming here because they'd have to send us a check anyway. You have uh, the resolution here which basically shows what they have to do to create a credit card, how they have to control it, uh, things like that. It would speed up things in my office if they were just able to go ahead and get their own credit card. Sometimes right now, if they only have one credit card and they have a couple different places that they're going, um, they have to write a check to the coach or the sponsor to make sure they have enough gas money to get back. Mm -hmm. This way they can just go ahead and get three or four credit cards, control it in the uh, athletic department's office and they're safe, sign them out as necessary. So that's what we're asking permission to do. So move. All right. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. And thank you, Ms. Kraft. Any questions, comments? Yeah. Uh, Tom Couple, uh, is this being forced upon the high schools, or does, is a principal and the athletic directors, are they behind this and encouraging it? No, it's coming from me. Okay. I speed up things in my office. The other thing on the wording, on uh, on line four and five, you have the card should be returned. I mean, there's, there should be no doubt when a coach is done, mm -hmm. the card will be returned. Okay. And you have employees w should maintain. It should be they will maintain an accounting system. This came right out of the State Board of Accounts manual. That's where I copied it from. So they always use should and, you know, they use those little legal, legalese mm -hmm. words. <coughs> and then wish you don't and then do you for it. <laughs> but you're right, Mr. Hall. I mean, the expectation is this credit card should, is designed really to be beneficial to the athletic department because of those fuel issues, as you know. So, but there are, it's a responsibility, and that card is a huge responsibility. So people have got to take great care of it. Um, we're hoping that our people will handle it appropriately. And so the wording that we perhaps would provide to them would perhaps be a little bit more strongly worded in terms of our expectations just to make sure so you make a good point. So they will check it out from the athletic office, somebody designated in the athletic office. They'll sign out for it, mm -hmm. use it, bring back the receipt, Correct. and turn it back in. Turn the card back in. Okay. Then it'll get locked up. Okay. They have to check out the minibus and pick up the keys and all that kind of stuff, so that would be part of their same, same time. process. Mm -hmm. That's good. So I guess I'm hearing this. In order for your office to be smoother, you're adding a duty to the high school office. Well, they have the duty now. I mean, they have a credit card now. They're supposed to get the receipt. The problem is, is they're not sending the receipts in on a timely basis. Mm -hmm. So this way it's not falling down on me. It's falling down on the school. It, it's their responsibility to handle the, the paperwork. They still have got to use a credit card and they've got to get the receipts up to time. Here, they've got to use a credit card and now at the school level, that athletic director and our bookkeeper at the school level, they're responsible to make sure that that's accounted for. Is this gas uh, for like the mid buses? Mm -hmm. Now, and that comes, is that strictly paid by each school now, or is there still a transportation gas fund here at the corporate? There's a transportation gas fund, but when you're up at New Washington, they're not going to drive a bus all the way down to Jeff to pick it up, so they need a credit card there. Same thing with Charleston. Charlestown, they also have a, a local gas dealer that they deal with there. It's not economical to drive 10 or 15 Exactly. But when this credit card bill is due at the end of the month, will the money be taken from local athletic department to pay that bill off? Or yes. And so that money could not be spent on uniforms, uh, equipment. It's now it's got to be paid on for gas. So the way it's written up, it's for gas only. When I go in and I audit their records at the end of the school year and I see that they're buying other stuff with it, then I'll come back to you and I'll revoke it. Either way, they'd have to take the funds out of their account. So either the, the their account is charged directly, or currently they have to write a check mm -hmm. to reimburse us at the central office level. So that's actually adding a step to them. Now it actually makes life a little easier for them, I think, mm -hmm. that they have their own card and they can control it, and they don't have to worry about sending it up to us. Yeah. If they drove the mid bus down to the service center and filled it up, they would have to pay. They pay for that gas. No, they oh. can fill up there free. 
So, so it's up. So uh, there are choices that the athletic department makes. They can say, guess what? We want someone to go down and fill up these uh, mini buses, uh, whatever, every week. Drive down there, fill it up. You know, that's a that's an option that's always open to them if that's convenient for them. But oftentimes those buses are used so much, coming and going, that it'd be very inconvenient for them, coaches, to jump in those mini buses and drive all the way down here. If you're a New Wash or Charlestown. You know, you understand that. So, and when, right. they, and when they bring the bus back, they're not going to fill it up. They're just going to park it. The kids will get off, and then you come in the next day, and you're taking it with your team, and you're down at the port of the tank. You're going to start looking for a gas station real quick. So. It's really designed to be more convenient for the schools. Now, do we benefit also because we don't have to do all the follow-up, trying to make sure all the receipts come in? Yes, but the schools, from a, they do not have to worry about writing checks. And sending those checks up to us, and so I think there's a, I think it'll be good for the schools yeah. also. I know as a former AD, some, it's tough to get coaches to put the windows up on a mid bus, mm -hmm. <laughs> much less turn in a credit card. Mm -hmm. So, I, I you see that late fees. Any time there's a late fee, it's going to be charged to the person who had the card. So maybe that'll encourage them to get their mm -hmm. stuff in. Isn't that right? Isn't that what it says? Light fees? No, it'll be charged to the school. It's not what it says. Light, light fees. That? I thought I read that. I don't remember seeing that. Uh, it says additionally, any interest or penalty incurred due to the late filing or furnishing of documentation by an officer or employee should be the responsibility of that officer or employee. Well, the officer would be the, the school. The school. Okay. Be the bookkeeper. <laughs> if you, all these credit cards are for one company, you can create a log on. Yeah. If you want to check it and just scan purchases, and they all ought to say gas. Mm -hmm. You can do that in two months, not wait a year. And if they don't say I gas, then you revoke that one. So. But. Well, I guess you always reserve the right to tweak as appropriate as well, right? Yes. So. Yep. Do we need a? Do we need to adopt a policy? Specific to the handling of these fuel cards, well, Sandy. It's a resolution that's attached. Mm -hmm. I needed a resolution. Yeah. Right, but resolution's not policy. Correct. So, so I'm asking, are we going to need another step, Sandy? We have policy-related credit cards for travel. There, there is a credit card policy already in place, correct? But if I, I think I've read it um, recently, mm -hmm. so. There is a policy in place, but the key factor will be that the schools will have to become very familiar with that policy and the expectations related to the card. But keep in mind, uh, both at Charlestown and New Washington, they've had credit cards, but they're corporation credit cards. Therefore, we have to make sure those bills are paid at the corporation level. Mm -hmm. But So the AD or the bookkeeper at the building becomes the middle person. And we want them not to be the middle person. We want them to be the one responsible to monitor, track, pay the bill. The money was coming out of that extracurricular, extracurricular account anyway. And it saves them a step of having to write a check and send it up to us. Yeah, so I think it's worth a try and let's see how it works. And, and if there are issues or problems, we'll come back to you obviously and make you aware. But hopefully it's going to be good for everyone. Well, these credit cards have a small limit, low limit on it. If a car did get lost, misplaced, stolen, we would set it up for like not to exceed two thousand dollars, not to, not knowing how many trips could be going out in a month. I mean, Jeff High, for example, could have twenty five, thirty trips going out different places. Two thousand dollars in fuel isn't very much. Now for New Wash, probably more than adequate for them. We'll have to look at what would be an appropriate monthly expenditure for fuel, based upon each school, and based upon that then set the credit card limit accordingly. That's a good point. Okay. For the discussion. All in favor? All right. Seven oh. Okay. Cancellation of outstanding check. Yes, every year around this time we always come to you and ask for permission to cancel checks that are in excess of two years old. 
We've been working on this list, whittling it down. We're down to two vendors or two two people. Um, so we have one for thirty-seven ninety-five for Stephanie Wilt and the Clark County Sheriff's Department for eight thousand two hundred and forty bucks. We've contacted them a couple times and have not gotten any response. We would say, you know, we say in our letter we will rewrite the check. We get no response. So we're asking permission to cancel it and add the money back into our account. So move. So move. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Could move faster. Yeah, and, it, and it's odd. And it's odd because every month normally there's a sheriff donation. Yeah. They're doing yeah. enough to they it. Give us <laughs> money. Well, there's more money. Yeah. They just gave us. They we could add that to the building. Yeah. 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 This is sheriff's yeah. department, not <laughs> sheriff's commissary fund. It's two different things. Yeah. 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 And the sheriff's yeah. department yeah. is broke. What? So. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're going to hear from the sheriff's department here soon. So they probably lost it. It's written off now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, I saw a uh, Mr. Hall, and did I have a second, Mr. Satterley? Any other questions, comments? All right. All in favor? All right. Seven zero. Thank you. All right, and then the. Uh, Number three is you're in appropriation transfers? Correct. On December 17th, I came before you and asked for a, uh, a resolution on appropriations. Did not give you any number at that point in time. State Board of Accounts always requires that we end all of our funds in positive balances. Mm -hmm. And uh, on your attachment, you'll see we have various transfers in and out, um, probably totaling close to a half a million, um, three quarters of a million dollars, which isn't bad. Um, so we're asking permission to finalize this resolution now. No. So move. Thank you, Ms. Satterley. Second. No oh, no action? No okay. Action. Thank no. you. All right. Okay, so well, thanks anyway, so Kevin. So. All right. We have, uh, well, thank you, thank Dr. Dykel. Appreciate that. All right, we have uh, item number four, the revision to the 2013-14 calendar. So Board, uh, appreciate your consideration of this. As you know, with weather the way it's been, um, we've lost seven instructional days. The state recently approved uh, the waiver of two days, uh, so now we're down to five. Uh, our executive team met this morning to discuss options. We discussed this with GCEA through our corporation discussion this afternoon. We appreciate their support and uh, consideration. And what we're proposing is that we go to school on President's Day as well as Oaks Day. And we understand that both are significant days in this uh, President's Day in our nation and Oaks Day in this area. However, um, in fear, they have a lot more winter to go. And we, we want to make sure that we still have a little bit of a cushion. What would happen is that our last student day, if you approve this, would be Friday, June 6th, and our last teacher day would be Monday, June 9th. That would leave us all of that week of June 9th for makeup days if the weather put us in that position. The goal is that we don't want to go to school after the 13th of June, which is when commencement is, uh, 13th and 14th. So we think that this is the way for us to uh, make a, a subtle change in our calendar. It's not something we normally like to do, but it's, uh, we think, in everyone's best interest. Um, and we would like your consideration tonight because if it's President's Day, we want to get it communicated out to our community tomorrow, if possible. So moved. Second. Thank you, Ms. Gilkey. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Second. Discussion? Questions? All right. All in favor? B70. Thank you. All right. Sorry, I lost my screen again. All right. We didn't have any uh, discussion items tonight. Uh, board reports or request? Mr. Hall? No, thank you. All right. Ms. Perkins? Mr. Satterley? Do you want me to do this here or uh, at the end? Report. I couldn't remember. My memory. I'm too short. I'm, yeah, I'd probably. I think probably. yours good. Yeah. Well, you guys got need to bear with me while I read something. That it's nice when we get some some positive remarks from from uh, or we get the eye of Indianap Indianapolis upon us. 
in speaking with the governor in his office, he sent us a proclamation, and I'll read just read it to you, on January 9, 2014. To the Greater Clark County Schools, I want to personally congratulate you on your dedication to help the youth of Indiana excel in education. By volunteering one week of each break and providing help to the children in your school system that want or need it, you have proven that education is the main focus of Hoosiers in, Indy, in Clark County and across the state. The foresight of Dr. Andy Mellon, superintendent of Greater Clark County Schools, has given young Indiana residents the ability to improve their education. By implementing a year-round calendar and allowing for a two-week recess in between each nine weeks, there is room for those children who may be falling behind in school. And this individual attention model allows for each child or the child to learn more than he or she would in a traditional classroom setting. The voluntary action of teachers, administrators, and staff benefit not only the child but the school system as a whole. The children who graduate from Greater Clark County Schools will be more prepared for whatever path in life they choose, whether it be to pursue higher education or select a career path. The Board of School Trustees of Greater Clark County Schools extends its congratulations to the administration and staff, as so do I. Your efforts show a commitment to learning, discovery, and engagement, which will prepare our youth for the future. And for this, I offer my profound gratitude. Sincerely, Michael R. Pence, Governor of Indiana. So, and congratulations to you guys. It says board, but we didn't. You know, we didn't do a bit of proof. You guys did a wonderful job, and I thought it was mm -hmm. wonderful that the governor would recognize that with a proclamation. So, so thank right. you. There is a. Thank you. He's got the, and Dr. Mellon has a nice sealed one that's going to be framed up by Renee and appropriately. You know, um, thank you very much. And it's great. Uh, the team that we have here has proven the, the dedication to our kids, and the intercession time frames are pretty unique in the state of Indiana. And knowing that we're doing everything in our power um, as an educational staff to help kids going above and beyond is extremely commendable and uh, we've got a great team um, of educators in the school corporation and uh, I appreciate Governor's uh, acknowledgement of our efforts and um, it was very nice. Thank you. You're more than welcome and only one more request is I'd like to see that tomorrow, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Satterling. Ms. Kraft? No, thank you. Nothing? Okay. Um, Nothing. Thank you. Mr. White? Ms. Gilkey? Nothing. Thank you. All right. All right. I'm, I'm having a time with my computer tonight for some reason. Thank you. All right. The next is uh, public comments on non agenda items. I think we have one. Uh, Mr. Denton, please. And you know the rules, so. <laughs> three minutes. You know how three minutes, my anticipatory set for most classes takes a lot longer than three minutes. Yeah. Um, it just, it, it's a long time. And, and this is kind of like talking to the choir because all of you either have children, have taught children, you work with children, aunts, uncles, you might be, and, and uh, across the whole room here, even, even you have a very young one. I know you take care of it. So, and um, you know how different kids are, and 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 how uh, I know my daughter Emily was so easy, but Ethan, I don't know what happened. And and uh, this is my grandson and granddaughter, and just kids kids are different. And again, I'm I'm sorry I'm talking to the choir, but you know how diverse the kids are, and how diverse populations are, uh, particular, and, and that's one of the big drawing points I think for Greater Clark County schools is our diversity and um, in the teachers by the way as I travel from school to school over the last few days they said can we do something to get more instructional days so I, I want to thank you now also it's not part of my subject but I want to thank you for President's Day and, and Oaks Day because I, I think maybe not all teachers but I think a majority of teachers that they said we need more days for the teach you know things for the AP test and we've got all this high high stakes test coming up and we really need more time and 
They had a few other suggestions too, but, <laughs> but I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, in a collab class, if, if, you know, I, I taught with a collab teacher, uh, one of them for 17 years and other collab teachers, and, and, and you just see there the diversity of kids with uh, kids that have struggle with a lot of different things, and then kids also like next year they're going to Purdue or something. You know, they're, they're just uh, in, in the same class a lot of times you have that diversity. And definitely in the, in the school you have a great deal of diversity, in, and it's a lot, lot big challenge to, to meet all the needs of all those kids. Um, grade level wise in our corporation, you know, kindergarten, and we're even looking at preschool because uh, the state's looking at money for preschool, so we're trying to get on the leading edge of that. Um, and going up to, and we're, we have kids that are not only taking high school classes, but they're doing classes that count as college classes. Just a lot of diversity. And, and, we, and I think it's a good thing, but one size doesn't fit all. Their needs are so different. Um, from New Wash to Jeff High School, then Charlestown, and of course, in between us, geographically. Man, that's fast. <laughs> anyway, teachers feel like they need to teach differently, that, that one size doesn't feed all. They, in uh, Goal 30 Windows, to, to count that 20% of the grade for all the kids in all the corporate, it just doesn't seem fair. The elementary teachers, they need more points counted that way. High school teachers need fewer points counted that way. It's, if you go to, um, from English to physics, the needs are different. And to try and get those classes and kids to fit into the same mold, into the same shirt, it's hard. It's, it's uh, difficult. And my time's up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Den. Appreciate it. Struggling with the agenda. <laughs> All right. Uh, board comments. Mr. Hall. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to, when uh, we were brought up tonight about ACT testing, you know, to me it seems, I hope we, we don't, but I think we have become a society. We just test our kids, test our kids, and we're testing. We, to name a few, the I-STEP, the ACT, the ECA at the end of the year, the Explorer, pre-test, post-test, acuity, all these types of tests that go on during the year. And I just hope we never, we never uh, lose touch with teachers teaching kids and teachers with relationships with kids and having time to, to have those classroom interactions. And I, I just hope we're not a testing society. But it, it seems like we're getting that way. That's how you prove who you are instead of by the relationships that you gain. That's it. All right, thank you. Ms. Perkins? That's kind of hard to follow. Um, I would just um, like to acknowledge the fact that uh, we were the, Greater Clark was the venue host for the Martin Luther King breakfast, and I appreciate the opportunity to attend that on behalf of the board and um, the uh, and Ms. Kraft was there and um, our superintendent did an excellent job in addressing that and also would like to congratulate Airmark because the food was delicious. Mm -hmm. It was very, very good and I heard lots of comments um, about the food and, and the service and uh, the professionalism of your staff, so thank you. Ms. Craft? I was going to say that about the food as well. It really, and I just told people, well, we eat like that all the time. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so then they went back and talked about that. And that's just fine. Mm -hmm. The French again. toast was really yeah, good. Yeah, thank you again for what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. White. I want to thank our teachers and our staff for giving up those days and, and the care and concern you have for our students is. is shows all the time, and I want to thank you all for that. Okay. Ms. Gilkey? Um, well, I was just going to say, you know, in the last couple of months, we've had a lot of opportunity to talk about how much we're improving on a regular basis. Um, 9A schools, ACT improvements all over the place. Tonight, we approved a revised calendar because the teachers said, yes, let's give up President's Day, let's give up Oaks Day. And 
I, I applaud our administration for all the initiatives, but nothing gets done without the teachers. And so I just wanted to take a second and say thank you. And I would appreciate if you all would pass that message out through the buildings that we're very appreciative of all the work that's being done in our buildings. Um, and I also wanted to thank Rusty for being here. He, thank you. I feel so much safer when you're back there. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's all I've got. All right. Thank you. Well, a couple things. Uh, first of all, we've we've had a pretty trying couple of weeks here, and. Um, uh, again, a shout out to our staff to make that made this happen. I saw some pictures out on I don't remember if it was Twitter or Facebook w of a couple of uh, uh, ladies out at New Washington Middle School that were bundled up like Eskimos, uh, greeting the kids coming in. And I know it's been a struggle, um, but I much very much appreciate everything that's been done out there to get the kids back into school and. Uh, uh, the second thing I wanted to talk about is uh, we have some committee assignments that were made, and I just want to cover everybody with that. Um, for our strategic planning committee representatives, that's going to be Ms. Gilkey and Ms. Perkins. Uh, Charlestown Redevelopment Representative, Mr. Hall. Jeffersonville Redevelopment Representative, Mr. White. Uh, Insurance Committee Representative is Ms. Gilkey. Uh, Education Foundation representative is Ms. Perkins. Uh, Finance Committee representatives are Mr. White and myself. Uh, Multicultural Diversity Committee representative will, um, let's see here, be Ms. Kraft. Uh, Bargaining Negotiation representative uh, will be myself. Uh, ISBA Nomination Committee representative, Mr. Hall. ISBA Legislative Liaison Representative, Ms. Kraft. Uh, Superintendent Parent Advisory Committee Representative, Mr. Satterley. And College and Career Readiness Representative uh, is Ms. Gilkey and Mr. Satterley. So thank you all for stepping up for those committees and uh, look forward to getting started. So, a couple Dr. Things. Mahone. Yes, sir. A couple of things. We also, uh, uh, Superintendent Ritz wrote a letter to us and if uh, Board, you'll remember that uh, Harshaw Train uh, recognized our school system uh, for environmental stewardship, and um, Glenda Ritz uh, wrote a letter congratulating our district on being named a recipient of the Environmental Stewardship Award. And on behalf of the Indiana Department of Education, I applaud your responsible management of taxpayer dollars and your commitment to future generations through environmental conservation. You, your district, and your community can be proud of this recognition. And there's another paragraph but at the, toward the end. Uh, along with the district recognition, four of your schools were personally recognized for their contributions to your savings. New Washington Junior Senior High School, Riverside Elementary School, Pleasant Ridge Elementary School, and Parkview Middle School all received the Energy Star designation. I applaud both your district and each school's efforts. Again, congratulations on this achievement. I'm grateful for your commitment to your schools and your community. So, board, uh, you know, congratulations, and of course, greatly appreciate the efforts of uh, Gus Luckert, uh, Steve Hobgood, Mike Merrill, all of our uh, maintenance and custodial personnel, because without them, uh, you don't get that level of recognition. And um, also, uh, I step testing. Uh, we we're we're looking. The state is looking to move testing back. Uh, I'm very hopeful that uh, at least that first testing window will be moved from that first of March at least back a week. We'll keep you informed and the hope would be that perhaps they'll consider moving the second I-STEP window back at least a week as well. So many schools around the state have missed so many days so we'll keep you informed of that. And lastly with the weather just to follow up on your comments you know um, it is it is a challenge uh, and certainly I've heard a few comments uh, in every which direction over the course of the last several weeks and and um, uh, I've appreciated so much um, even though people are at different levels of acceptance of these decisions the fact is we have people out at all hours of the early morning that are driving roads making sure parking lots are clear so 
Travis here is an individual who's up, uh, out, um, all over the place. Uh, really, I count on to help be my eyes out there. And then you take Gary Green, who's doing the same as a director of transportation, and all of our bus drivers that we've asked to sort of step up to a challenge because some of the roads, especially last Thursday and Friday, were not as good as we'd like them to be. And our drivers did a great job. And then, of course, um, Steve Hobgood and all of our maintenance crew, I mean, to clear all these parking lots is a never-ending battle and try to salt them. And then our custodians, our buildings, trying to get sidewalks clear. I mean, this is a major effort that takes many, many hours of manpower, most of which is occurring when it's still dark out. And uh, so I just think that, you know, we're thankful. We have 1,400 employees in this school corporation that are all extremely valuable to everything that we're doing uh, for our kids. So thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mellon. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. And thank you, Mr. Satterley. All in favor?